A couple years ago, I made a video where I demonstrated the basic setup for an anesthesiologist, and in that video, I included a small detail that left some viewers bewildered. I always like to have my eye tape ready to go. I tape a patient's eyes closed pretty much immediately after induction. My name's Max Feinstein, and I'm an anesthesiology resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this video, I explain the risks of inadequate eye protection under anesthesia and what anesthesiologists can do to minimize those risks for patients. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Let's dive in. Just a reminder that this video is not medical advice, it's just a YouTube video. If you need medical advice, talk to your doctor. When a patient is under anesthesia, we actually expect that they'll lose their eyelid reflex, which ordinarily is a protective mechanism against any sort of eye damage. While intuitively it doesn't seem like there'd be anything to protect the eyes from under anesthesia, there can actually be quite a bit of activity that occurs over a patient's face that if the eyes aren't adequately protected, could risk damage to the eyes. Examples include airway manipulation, where an anesthesiologist is leaning over a patient's face, or the surgical drapes, which go up at the beginning of the surgery or come down at the end of surgery, and really anything in between that passes over a patient's face. For that reason, a corneal abrasion is actually by far the most common eye injury that occurs under anesthesia. Because of these risks, it's actually routine practice to protect a patient's eyes after anesthesia has been induced. Anesthesiologists generally use some form of adhesive tape, but there's a lot of consideration that goes into what tape exactly should be used. If tape that's very strong is used, it can actually pull off some of the skin from the eyelid when it's being removed. This is called denuding. The eye tape that I personally have grown up with, so to speak, during my training at Mount Sinai is this special tape made by Sharn, which is nice because it's not too strong, neither too weak, and it also has a special little pull tab that makes it easy to remove at the end of surgery. And while a pull tab may seem like a small detail for a piece of eye tape, it's actually really helpful to easily remove tape at the end of surgery. Not bad as opposed to something like Tegaderm, which can make someone struggle for a little bit to actually remove it. And talking about attention to detail, some of the other key factors to consider are whether the adhesive that you're using is permeable to liquid or not. There are actually studies that show that paper tape is permeable to liquids like chlorhexidine, which is a common cleaning solution. Another important detail to consider is single-use products because it's actually been shown that using a roll of tape between multiple patients can actually be a vector for transmission of infection, which is another reason I prefer iGuard because there's a separate sheet of adhesive for each patient. I'll also just point out that there was a randomized study that was done comparing Tegaderm and iGuard, and it found that iGuard leaves less redness or erythema on the patient's eyelid than Tegaderm does. I imagine this probably has to do with the nature of the adhesive used, and while it seems like it might be an unimportant detail, I do think it's something that patients might care about after surgery. The last small but really important detail I'll leave you with is considering where you place a pulse oximeter on your patient. Keeping in mind that when patients wake up from anesthesia, there is a common tendency to reach for and rub their eyes. So corneal abrasions can actually occur as patients are waking up from anesthesia and their eyes are no longer protected. For that reason, if at all possible, I avoid placing a pulse oximeter on a patient's index finger and instead prefer something like a ring finger or their pinky. For this reason, the most common communication between an anesthesiologist and their patient after surgery is, don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your eyes. Please don't touch your eyes. When a corneal abrasion does occur, it can be quite uncomfortable for patients, causing physical pain and also make vision blurry. And typically it will resolve within 72 hours, but on occasion it can last for longer than that, requiring follow-up with an ophthalmologist. Again, this video is not medical advice, so please see your doctor if you have questions. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video that I made where I review the standard monitoring equipment that's used for anesthesia care. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.